Hello, my name is Robbie Tribble, and today I will be talking about all things COVID-19. From the most significant economic downturn recorded in American history, to how to protect our loved ones, to school closings, this pandemic has hit Americans hard, and today I will attempt to disseminate this information. The economy shrank by 9.5% from April to June, and we have lost so much in such a short period of time. This drop in GDP was the fastest quarterly dip in modern record keeping. As the ground beneath the economy shook, tens of millions of jobs were erased, businesses faltered, and the future of our economy became further intertwined with an uncontrolled public health crisis. With that pain still fresh for millions of Americans, economists say the second quarter stands as an urgent warning for what is at stake if the prospects of a recovery from earlier this summer vanish. While Congress clashes over another stimulus bill and the virus forces more states to shut down bars and restaurants again, there is mounting fear that the economy could be held back more, making a true recovery harder to attain. On July 30th, the government also reported that jobless claims increased once again last week to 1.4 million, another sign that prospects of a healthy recovery have faltered. GDP shrank at a rate of 32.9%, according to the Bureau of Economic Analysis, the agency that publishes the statistics on quarterly economic activity. Although it usually stresses the annualized rate, that figure is less useful this quarter because the economy is unlikely to experience another collapse like it did in the second quarter. Still, while a tailspin at the second quarter rate is doubtful, the earlier recovery we saw this summer appears to be in jeopardy, according to these latest numbers. So is everyone overreacting to this pandemic? According to NPR, two thirds of Americans think the US is handling COVID-19 worse than other countries are, and they may be right. Given the numbers, we have some of the worst spikes in coronavirus cases seen throughout the world. Coronavirus is not something that is happening far away in New York City any longer. My great aunt, Betty, who owned and operated Six Mile Restaurant on the old U.S. Highway 20 in Shipshawana, Indiana, died from the virus. My childhood doctor, John Egley, who practiced out of Topeka, Indiana, was on ventilator support in an ICU unit, and he is probably not going into, back into practice as a result of complications from the virus. Dr. Norm Miller, a chiropractor and a friend out of Middlebury, Indiana, also suffered severe complications from the virus and has been in the hospital for the last two months and will likely not go back into practice either. This virus has hit our healthcare workers hard and we need to remember their sacrifice and humility in this time. Just this week, Alabama and Mississippi were named new hotspots. Deaths are still at their highest level since May, even though the number of new cases fell from 66,000 to 60,000 in the last two weeks. Earlier in the summer, there seemed to be a disconnect between case numbers and death counts, with the death counts remaining low even as new case counts rose. But this time, the case count is declining and the death count is rising. We may not be keeping up with testing capabilities and contact tracing, and that is a scary prospect for all of us. My cousin is a teacher in South Korea one of the first places hit hard by the virus. And through testing and contact tracing, they fared better on their outcomes. I believe our public healthcare response is lacking, but we are doing good things as well. The president came up with a plan to help the uninsured with COVID-19 cost. And that is a step in the right direction for those who cannot afford treatment. One man in Seattle occurred $1.1 million after spending 62 days in an intensive care unit at $9,700 a day, and that was with 3,000 individual itemized charged charges also on the bill. When going out in public, mainly any place indoors, it is essential to wear a face covering that covers your mouth and nose. If you have a hard time breathing in a face mask, you may be in luck because face shields may protect you better according to recent studies. They also cover your eyes and protect your ears to an extent. For healthcare workers in ICU units working with these patients, they wear face masks and face shields as well as personal protective equipment that protects the body. 
I can understand why some feel the response to this pandemic has been harsh. Still, we must come together as a country to address issues at hospitals reaching ICU capacity, overwhelming our healthcare system. When I completed an inquiry recently from Sturgis Public Schools for my five-year-old to start kindergarten this fall, I actually picked the in-school option, which was a hard decision for me. My five-year-old has no siblings his age to interact with and I am worried about the social issues he may face as a result of distance learning. He is just a kid, and I think if the school practices social distancing with the proper, proper coverings and techniques, we can implement these priorities safely. I do worry about my older parents, and whenever we see them, we tend to meet outside and keep a safe distance. I know this pandemic has been hard on everyone, Changing how we learn and changing how we interact interpersonally is difficult, and we all just want to break from it. My mom's aunt, Betty Lou Marner, will be missed, and I will always remember how she would invite my family in to sit at the table inside the kitchen where she would converse with us as she made f the food we ordered. I will miss her hospitality tremendously, and the many customers who traveled through Shipshawano will have a hard time finding a waitress and cook comparable to my great aunt Betty. Thank you all so much. This class has been wonderful and I hope to see you all again. Thank you.